Good morning, everyone. Oh, I just saw the creepiest thing. <laughs> so I, I, I've seen, you know, that I guess I'm one that doesn't, hasn't put the finger on it yet, you know, so you won't see all them advertisements and just your friends or this or that. Or, I don't know. I'm kind of going, uh, I might, I might at least the way my Facebook page is set up now, it's, it's seems to be pretty good and okay. <laughs> so, <coughs> and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't trust. Yeah. Certain things are when I have like this gut feeling of, eh, I might just open that Pandora's box if I do that, right? To other things. Well, anyway, but, uh, so one of the, one of the advertisements, I don't know how I, that, I guess everybody sees it and gets it, is that Temu, T-E-M-U, uh, uh, clothing company that's from somewhere, and if you just start out with them, you can, you look at the stuff, you go, wow, that's really nice, I really like that, I really like this, you know, that's kind of cool, and, and it's like, oh, if you just be, sign up or order the first time, you get something for a dollar and something, right? Yeah, something that otherwise be, what, $30 or something. And I'm going, oh, 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 wow, I could just order from them one time, right? And then get the, all right, there's a hitch there. I have no doubt, you know, so no, anyway, pretty stuff to look at. But otherwise, I'm going, eh, I get ideas. Oh, I could make this. I could do that. <laughs> okay, all right. And uh, someone just posted, oh my God, it was, oh my God. They had ordered something, a pair of pants from them and got the package and left it in a clothes basket for a, for a week or something and finally took out the pants. And there was a snake in it, still alive too. Oh, I really, oh, oh my gosh. I looked at that and got, oh my gosh. I mean, don't get me wrong, so we live here with snakes, poisonous, non-poisonous, and uh, it is what it is, right? But they're out there. Oh, yeah, we had them in the house, too, but uh, not not very often. <laughs> and uh, I said, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things. If you leave things around here, outside, in a box or something that a snake could get in, you might find one when you take it in the house and start unpacking, which that's exactly what happened here with some people, right? Oh, it came from, I'm going, no, it can't. I know where it came from. There is no way that a snake otherwise can get into this house. We've never had one in the basement either. So that'll tell you something. So anyway, but we had them in the garage. And, uh, and, uh, uh, anyway, that's a it's a good thing to <laughs> sometimes clean things out everywhere to okay. <coughs> and one of my cats brought one in one time <laughs> right after we were sitting out there and I said, "Yeah, it's amazing. You know, I'm just waiting for the day eventually after years and years already been where one of our cats will bring a snake in the house, right? And here comes Woody, our oldest cat, and what does he have in his mouth and where is he going with it?" <laughs> I was, I was like, guys, did you just see that? What did I just say? What happened? I had to go after it. It was a, it was just a quarter snake. So, you know, and, and, uh, when I came in, he kind of realized, oh, okay. She doesn't want that in here. And he skedaddled out with it again, but still, <laughs> my gosh, can you imagine you get, you're ordering a pair of pants and, uh, or, or anything and you, you're taking it out of the, out of the box or out of the plastic. It looked like they were in, you know? And there is a there is a extra gift. <laughs> oh my god! That was so creepy. <laughs> I've just oh, I put myself in the position of this person, you know. Probably goes, whoa, what is that? Anyway, so yeah, okay. So what now? Yeah, I'm probably never, ever, ever, ever going to. Now I'm thinking I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to order anything online again. I don't know. Is that kind of a warning? Is that beware? Okay. I don't know. I have no idea. But, and then again, right? My thought, I, oh, that's nice looking stuff. And hey, if I sign up or 
The first time I ordered, I could get something for basically nothing, you know. Ooh, 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 right? That's a, such a nice kind of, oh, you get kind of pulled into it. And I'm thinking, nah, eh, I'm just, I'm just going to get some ideas from what they're showing here rather than, ah, uh, okay, well, then how would the economy keep going if everybody were to think like you? I don't know, maybe better. <laughs> I have no idea, right? Yes, I think a lot of things could be going better if a need for things, material things, wouldn't be so high. Yes? Yeah. Well, anyway. Quality over quantity kind of thing. Well, anywho, <laughs> I, just, I saw that. Then I had another interesting experience, and then it was interesting. My sissy um, this morning woke up and said, Hey, I had this longest dream. I'm going, you did? And she does. She has the longest dreams. And she remembers everything, too. Unlike me. And uh, she says, can I tell it to you? Because I need to get this out of my system. I said, yeah, yeah, go right ahead. And I had an interesting experience yesterday, or, or my, my thought process, with a dream that I had, which I retained some of it, interestingly enough. And, okay, if I remember, I'll tell it to you later. Uh, if it's necessary to do so. Or maybe I need to first uh, gain a little bit more experience with my experience and, and understand the teachings or what I was given again in a way I had to say, wow, this is, what is the dream world actually? You know, what, what, what does it signify? What does it signal to us? I didn't say it right. Thank you. I got sometimes uh, with English, I still wonder, so did I say that right now? It sounds like right, but okay. All right, let's get going here first. We are in Chron first book of Chronicles in nine. And again, I'm reading out of the, this Bible here, the Living Bible. Ah, uh, my plans changed. Yeah. Um, uh, so... My brother-in-law can't be back. I wasn't going to be back. And the original plan was for him to be back tomorrow. So, so uh, not, not yesterday. So, though he was the one who said, I did not tell him that, oh, actually, I added a little something to my plan. And didn't do that because I didn't want, we had a plan. I like to stick to a plan regardless on what comes up. And I don't like to mess with someone else's plans. Just because I now changed the plan? No, so, no, uh, 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 no, 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 no. So I was going to see, okay, if he does show up, then that is meant to be that I can go up there earlier and spend time, yes, uh, with my spiritual daughter and her children as well, or not. And, uh, and then, uh, so I had to cancel that, which was fine. And then uh, uh, I talked to my other daughter again. I said, so when are you going to come pick me up? And she said, well, actually... So, here is the thing. My daughter right, wanted to have some help to be there for her husband with the children while he has to take care of them himself, picking them up from daycare and school or to be there, the snap. And she was worried that that wouldn't work for him. So, here I am, right? Okay, yes, Grozy, Grandma can step in and help out. And he told her, he said, no, I want to do this on my own. I want, I want, I want to make that commitment that my children are more important than my job. He's he's the manager. Right? He runs the whole company. This and that. So he he's it's not like an employee who has to be there. From okay, he is there from sun up to sundown and later, and he's been doing this for many 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 years now. And he said that. I have the flexibility now that I can say I've done my job. I don't need to do anything else here right now. I can leave at the appropriate time to go and pick up my children if that is needed. And he says, I want to do that. And so my daughter tells me, so he's, it's not that he doesn't want you to come. It's he wants to do it on his own. He wants to 
take that responsibility while I'm not there, that he is the other parent that will step in to do it all. And I thought that was wonderful. I said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. She says, but we might still need you the second week. I'm going, okay. I said, just see how it goes and let me know. I said, I'm flexible. And she says, mom, you're so great, you know. And I said, I'm, I tell him, I applaud him for what he's trying to do, or wants to, wants to do. Try? I know he will. Isn't that just an amazing husband and father? Come on now, you guys. That's just right. Yes. How much easier would it just be for him to say, oh, yeah, get your mama here. She'll clean, cook, take care of the kids. And I'm just, you know, yeah. yes, no, mm -mm, no, he's the father. He's the husband and he's the father there. And when mama has to go someplace for her work, this snap, and is not going to be home for some time, he's the one who's going to take care of it all. Wow. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> wonderful so plans have changed a little bit which as i said huh is that oh eh, eh, no not at all not for me i'm looking at this going wow that's amazing yes uh, so yeah i don't get to spend as much time as i wanted to with my grandchildren uh -huh. but oh, gosh i can't to see that's the next generation to see on how they take responsibility and care for their families. That's amazing to me. I could not be happier. As the mom and the mother-in-law could not be happy. Okay, all right, there. All right, let's get going in. Nine here, first book of Chronicles. The family tree of every person in Israel was carefully recorded in the annals of the kings of Israel. Really? Everyone? Huh. Oh, so this isn't it? The Chronicles isn't it then? The annals of the kings of Israel and the Chronicles are something different? I don't know. Let's find out. Judah was exi exiled to Babylon... Because the people worshipped idols. Uh, really? Mm, I don't think that's true. The first to return and live again in their former cities were families from the tribes of Israel and also the priests, the Levites, and the temple assistants. That's not true as far as I know. Right? Who did they leave behind? While well, the, the king of Assyria and Egypt and who else? No? Yeah, I guess Babylon, whatever. They, when they moved all the people, who did they leave behind? The commoner just gets the farmer, the ones that, okay, yeah, yeah they're not going to do as much good there, but they're going to do as more good here, right? What? They're just forgotten? They don't mean anything? So they're, 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 what, their genealogy or whatever, their family trees are not recorded anywhere? They're just not important enough? Wow. That's kind of what I'm getting here, unless I'm missing something and they did deport everybody. But that's not what we read about earlier on, did we? Mm, okay. Then some families from the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh arrived in Jerusalem. Also, it doesn't say why did they return again. Did they, were they let go? I guess. Maybe I can't remember that part. One family was that of Utai, the son of Amihud, son of Omri, son of Imri, son of Bani, and of the clan of Perez, son of Judah. The Shilonites were another family to return, including Uzziah, Shilon's oldest son, and his sons. There were also the sons of Sarah, including Jewel and his relatives, 690 in all. <laughs> wow. 690. So precise again. Among the members of the tribe of Benjamin who returned were these, Salu, the son of Meshulam, 
the son of Hodaviah, the son of Hasenua, Ibneiah, the son of Yeroham, Elah, the son of Uti, the son of Mikri, Mikri, Meshulam, the son of Shep, Hataiya, the son of Ruel, the son of Ibnija, Ibnija. Hey, these men were all chiefs of subclans. A total of 956 Benjaminites returned. The priests who returned were Jediah, Yehoarib, and Yachin. Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, son of Meshulam, son of Sadak, son of Merayat, son of Ahitub. He was the chief custodian of the temple. Another of the returning priests was Adiah son of Yeroham, son of Pashur, son of Malkijah. Another priest was Maasai, son of Adiel, son of Jazerah, son of Meshulam, son of Meshilemit, son of Immer. In all, 1,760 priests returned. 1,760 priests returned. Hmm. Among the Levites, Levites who returned was Shemaiah, son of Hashub, son of Azrikam, son of Hajabiah, who was a descendant of Merari. <laughs> Here it is. Sounds like Ferrari, doesn't it? <coughs> Other Levites who returned included Buck, Buck, Buck. And how many K's can there be in one name? Bak Bakkar, Bak Bakkar, Heresh Galal, Mataniah, the son of Micah, who was the son of Sikri, who was the son of Asaf, Asap, Abadiah, the son of Shemaiah, son of Galal, son of Jeduthun, 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 Berechiah, the son of Azza, son of Elkanah, who lived in the area of the Netophatites. 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 Hmm. The gatekeepers were Shalom, the chief gatekeeper, Akub, Talmon, and Ahiman, all Levites. Gatekeeper for what? The temples? They are still responsible for the eastern royal gate. Oh. Palace gates, not temple gates. Hey, I don't know. Shalom's, what would priests do be doing there? Shalom's ancestry went back through Kore and Ebiasab to Korah. He and his close relatives, the Korahites, were in charge of the sacrifices and the protection of the sanctuary, just as their ancestors had supervised and guarded the tabernacle. Really? Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, was the first director of this division in ancient times. Phinehas. And the Lord was with him. Oh, that's good. At that time, Zechariah, the son of Meshelal, Meshelemiah, had Mesh, Meshelemiah, Meshelemiah, had been responsible for the protection of the entrance to the tabernacle. Oh. There were 212 doorkeepers in those days. 212, what for? They were chosen from their villages on the basis of their genealogies and they were appointed by David and Samuel because of their reli reliability. Hmm. Interesting way to appoint people by genealogies and reliability. I don't know what that meant in those days. They and their descendants were in charge of the Lord's tabernacle. They were assigned to each of the four sides, east, west, north, and south. 
and their relatives in the villages were assigned to them from time to time for seven days at a time. So it sounds like at that time, okay, so I thought, it talked here about when they returned, then it goes back into way back at the time where the tabernacle was still in a tent. The four head, I don't know, it's a little confusing. The four head gatekeepers, all Levites, were in an office of great trust, for they were responsible for the rooms and treasures, treasuries in the tabernacle of God. Because of their important positions, they lived near the tabernacle and they opened the gates each morning. out there. Could be a coyote. Okay. Because of their important positions, they lived near the tabernacle and they opened the gates each morning. Some of them were assigned to care for the various vessels used in the sacrifices and worship. They checked them in and out to avoid loss. Others were responsible for the furniture, the items in the sanctuary, and the supplies such as fine flour, wine, incense, and spices. Other priests prepared the spices and incense. And Mati... I bet that's where the name Matthias came from. Matithaya, a, Levit, a Levite, and the oldest son of Shalom, the Korahite, was entrusted with making the flat cakes for grain offerings. Some members of the Kohat clan were in charge of the preparation of the special bread each Sabbath. The cantors were all prominent Levites. Prominent ones. Ooh, God forbid, be a lower caste one. <laughs> they lived in Jerusalem at the temple and were on duty at all hours. They were free from other responsibilities and were selected by their genealogies. Of course. Cantor. J.L., whose wife was Ma'aka, lived in Gibeon. He had many sons, including Gibeon, Abdon, the oldest, Sir, Kish, Baal. Oh, I never went and checked that out. Nair. Oh, there is Nair. I was Nair missing before. Nadab, Gedor, Ohio, Zechariah and Miklot. Miklot lived with his son Shimei Am in Jerusalem near his relatives. Ner was the father of Kish. Kish was the father of Saul. Saul was the father of John Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, and Eshbal. Eshbal. Jonathan was the father of Me P. Boshet. Mepi Boshet was the father of Micah. Micah was the father of Piton. Melech, Taria, and Ahatz. Ahatz was the father of Yara. Yara was the father of Elemet, Atzmavet, and Zimri. Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Binea. Repahia, Eleazar, and Azel. Azel had six sons. Azrikam, Bakaru, Ishmael, Shearaya, Obadiah, and Hanan. Well, lots of repetition here. So, interesting. The duties of the Levites. I got it. Yet, how come... How come in the duties of the Levites, there seems to be nobody assigned to actually teach the people? It's all about what? And they keep it really close-knit, don't they? D. 
didn't God create all that? Had them do all this stuff with the Ark of the Covenant and all for all of Israel? Sounds like it was just done for the few selected ones. And what the commoners were good for is what? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm just saying, it's not, right? How, how is this represented here? Am I being told, well, you know what? That's how they did it. Yeah. And that's how it has to be done. Again, interestingly enough, there's nothing in here saying God assigned. How is it done? Okay, just say, I don't know. I, I wasn't there. But it so sure sounds like there was a hierarchy going on there as well. God's not about hierarchy. He's not about that at all. Okay, done. I can't say any more about this. I mean, I, 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 I don't know what to say more about it, really, when it comes down to it. It's just so apparent on why we have leadership problems, right? Or leadership problems. I don't know. Is that a problem, really, when it comes down to it? What if they suddenly were to say, okay, guys, let's change things. Would people be happy with that? I don't know. Uh, ah, that's my brother-in-law again. I'm pretty sure he has to wait now. Not getting up to go and get the phone. Um... Yeah, would people be happy? And, okay, I've seen, uh, uh, we had real cold weather here, and the electric bill went up, uh, let's say, 11% or something. So we were a little concerned as well, because we had the little heaters going during the cold spell, and besides just to, uh, right, uh, yeah, just to have a little extra warmth in our rooms and in the bathroom. And, uh yeah, so a little bit concerned, you know, <laughs> and uh, got the bill, was surprised it was $3 cheaper than the month before. Okay, it was mostly just Sissy and I here, so my brother-in-law wasn't here, who <laughs> has his, his stuff running in his room <coughs> sometimes. <coughs> but all in all, we're, we conserve a lot of electricity here. There is no lights on in the house unless you're there actually needing the light. Uh, there is no TV on uh, unless somebody's actually watching it. There's no, there's, okay, get my drift. Yes, okay. So, uh, so we conserve, right, a lot. You conserve a lot when it comes to electricity. So, I, yet people out there were shocked over their electricity bills, right? Yes. And, well, I guess I guess I won't eat this month or something or you know, all kinds of things. I got it. Yes. Yeah. Why the height? The height why it, constantly are our prices going up? Yes? Oh, the cost of everything. Well, okay. Really? Well, why is that? What's the cause of all that? How come we can't make a loaf of bread for the 25 cents you used to be able to make a loaf of bread? Why does it have to be, or buy one even, okay, maybe 50 cents or a dollar, okay? Why now suddenly with the much worse quality that most of the bread that you can buy in the store is now, how come it's gotten so much more expensive? We're paying more for things that are less, lesser in quality. Okay? Yes? It's an odd one. What's the cause of that? Oh, I know the explanations out there. I don't believe them. I do not. Anyway. So there it is. There's still ways that one can do things very inexpensive, but it takes a little more effort on our part. With the electricity bills, it's the same thing. Okay. Oh, 
Again, what are you going to change? You're not going to change anything about the 11% increase. And you're not going to be able to change anything about your electricity bill. You're going to have to pay it or be without electricity eventually, right? Yes? So you have a choice. Look around <coughs> and see, make a list, start looking, where can I conserve on energy in my household? Yes? And uh, one thing that I know is that just every home that I've gone to is the amount of clothes that need to be washed and dried continuously. I've had four children. I've never had mounds like that all week long, all month long. And probably the reason is, is because I would look at my, oh, my children were busy, okay? I'd look at my children's clothes and go, they can wear these pants one more time the next day. They can wear this shirt one more time, right? Yes, and including myself. Yeah. Do you have, oh, and children, they can change sometimes. They're clothes three times a day. I know my little granddaughter, she just loves, she loves to be that princess in the morning and that princess in the afternoon and in between, you know, I've got to put clothes on so we can go outside and play. And Okay, you get the drift? Well, I look at her when I would clean up, help, and she always helped me clean up her room with her and say, you only wore this for a couple hours today. Go put that back in your in your dress-up box. Go put that back in your dress-up box. In your, you know. I mean, she lives dress-up, I think, most of the time. <laughs> and, uh, oh, these pants, let's see. You wore the, oh, you put those on, didn't like them, took them back off. Okay, let's put those back in your drawer. Yes, yeah, see? Okay. Then she did not end up, my, well, I was there, and I actually have to say, in, in the, my children's households, that, that it doesn't look like that. The, their laundry uh, all over the place, it doesn't look like that. Not like I've seen in other homes where I'm going, oh, my gosh, what the heck happened here, right? Yes? And uh, so there. But, but again, right, with, my, with, my, uh, uh, with my grandson, the same thing. I said, that doesn't all belong in the uh, laundry basket. So let's have a look first, right? And, uh, and that way, okay, one thing, right? Yes? Uh, and the other one is keep your lights turned off. Yeah, I get, oh, but they, you know, now with the light bulbs we have, no, that's, uh, well, you know what? For 30 days in a month, right, it matters. I think it matters. Yes. So if you can conserve 50 or $60 off your electricity bill, then what are you looking at? Then you got 50 or $60 extra, right? If you, if you really learn how to conserve, then you might even do better. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm at, anyway, I'm just saying, right? yes. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So if, uh, so what do you want to do? You want, the leader's going, okay, well, I'm not sure exactly on how it works with electricity, this snap, but there's supposedly it's only so much to go around. I, I don't know. It seems like there's a plenty. And, and uh, but of course, the more electricity that needs to be produced, right, for everyone's want, not need, want, then, of course, that, that's going to cost more. And who's going to pay for that? Well, if you use more electricity, then you're going to pay more. Yes? No, just saying. Right? The upkeep of all these plants, this and that, right, is, uh, uh, well, becomes greater too, the more there are. Okay, all right, I'm just saying. Right? So, is it, does it make a big old difference on who's the leader uh, what they're doing if we're not willing right, ourselves first in our own environment to start to clean up because we point that finger and that finger points right back to us just about doesn't matter what it is yes all right so I'm going to give you real quick that 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 other, that other thing. So again, so go go back to the temple thing, and 
And okay, there's a hierarchy going on, obviously, there. Okay, if they're choosing people by genealogy rather than by ability and and commitment to God, we have a problem right there. Okay, there's a problem. Okay. Oh, do people look at it that way? I do. <laughs> <coughs> Because the proof is in the pudding when it comes to royalty stuff, right? Yes? Just because you supposedly are born in a certain lineage doesn't mean what? Okay. So, I had the stream, and I remember part of it. The basic thing in the dream is, is that I met an old friend who's passed away for a long time already. And it took me a while to figure out who that person was in the dream. And how we ended up living together, but in separate rooms. But it was kind of, it was a, it was, it was a, it was a fabulous place to live. And she had, I can't, I couldn't, I know she didn't have a daughter. She had no children, but there was someone with her helping her okay and that's the reason also on her physical condition and right? i could tell that's how i recognized her right from from physical life here that we had spent together and uh i was surprised well in any case i walked into the last home that we had moved to together this wasn't the first home we lived in together and i walked in and she there was this beautiful rooms there was this smaller room, and her stuff was all there. They were unpacking, getting settled. And I'm walking into, I said, this, then said, oh, this, this over here is your room. And I'm walking into the other room. It's way bigger, brighter, beautiful. And I'm going, no, 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 no. She's going to live there. I'm taking this room, the smaller one. And the helper or the one that was serving her said, no. No, she doesn't want that. She likes this. She likes this right here. That's what she wants. That's where she's going to be comfortable in. And you will be there. I'm going, oh, okay. Because I looked at the other, I'm going, yeah. I mean, I would be comfortable in both, but yeah, that's, I really like that. And since right, I was told, no, this is where she wants to be. Basically, I was told, respect her wishes. Right? Yes? Okay. That's kind of the last part of the dream and I woke up and and I thought man there was so much more to it and that only the last part I can remember and on how to and in the last part I could identify the person or as I okay kept thinking said well it's not that one it's not this person it's not thinking I know who that is I know who that is the thing is is I never got to see her face okay Yet I have still figured out who it is. Oh, how are you so sure? Because I know my friend Miriam. Okay. So I kept thinking. I was like, what? That was interesting. I've had some other dreams lately where, again, do you want me to tell them? Uh, no, not going to happen unless something triggers them. Uh, a thought or somebody says something or I'm thinking about it. I'm going, oh, I just remembered the whole dream. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. But I've said this before, that I don't give much credence to dreams. Yet, with this last one, yesterday, I thought, wait a minute. So what are dreams really about? And I believe it has something to do with our spiritual growth. I believe that considering the dreams that I remember when I was younger, a few, then a few in between, then a few more, now I remember parts of dreams okay. <laughs> and what they are, what they kind of signal. I think it's my spiritual growth. In spirit world. So once again, through, through dreams, I believe people can assess where they are in their physical life or how their physical life is affecting their spiritual life, their spiritual growth.
Is it? Okay, I don't know if it's true. I, I, I haven't, I said that just yesterday at this realization. Then this morning, my sister-in-law says, hey, I had this big old dream and I need to get it out of my system. This now. And she tells me all of it. Then after that, I asked her a few questions. I said, so how, where were you in the dream? And she says, oh, it's always like a movie or something. I'm always on the outside, right? Well, I've noticed within my dreams lately that I'm always right in the dream as well. And often am. Sometimes I am just a spectator, yet still I'm moving through the dream as well, right? Like, uh, like the one where yeah, I ended up, my gosh, what a realm that was. I was just guided through. And then actually, because I got so pulled into the, ooh, it was a, okay, I'm not going to, maybe another time. I think I've already told this anyway in another video. But an interesting part was on how I was stopped from re-entering. Once I've, once I've got out of the realm, I wasn't sure where I needed to go. And I ended up in the throng of the people that wanted to get into this filthy realm. And uh, I started out in the filthy realm. So I was put there and then walked through, got to the, and all I remember, was, I got to get to the exit, got to the exit, but then didn't know where to go and ended up in a throng of people again who were at the entrance. And, uh, and I was pulled back. Something pulled me back. No, 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 you're going the wrong way now. You, we've, we've shown you what we wanted to show you. And uh, So that's, okay, that's a different kind of dream maybe where, again, ah, uh, okay. But I thought, but yesterday I thought, after I had this dream with my friend Miriam in this place, it's almost as if through your dreams you do get a look into where you're going to be in spirit world, what awaits you. Or where you are at. If you were to go today, where you are at. Are your fears still controlling you? Right? Are you still overpowered by <coughs> traumas that happened in your life? Or also are you, you know, is, is your conscience, you know, is it feeling guilty, ashamed, um, threatened, coerced, forced, or are you free? Are you truly free, happy, content, where you are at in life? And has the merit that you have accrued through kindness, for example? Yes. Uh, and your kindness isn't just what you do out there for other people. Kindness also, huh? To yourself is when you keep your your thoughts, your heart to mind, your thoughts in a in a in a place where you eliminate the negative that could come out of yourself. Yes, huh? towards others, even yourself. Anyway. I'm still working on it. If I get a little bit more clarity, I will I will keep telling what, what I find uh, through my existence. And uh, that was really interesting then. Yes. Oh. So what do I think about my spiritual growth, about my spirit life, or if if that were, if if it is true, if I if I'm getting this right, then I'm in a very, very good place. If our dreams are letting us know, that's where you are at. Should you pass today, this is where you are at. Then, okay. Spiritual growth, first of all, that we know exists. It is absolutely 100% there. Just as we physically are born as a baby and grow. And the nurture that we get, the better we are going to end up physically as an adult. And then as we care for ourselves, okay, you got it? And it's the same thing with our spirit body, our spiritual growth. So it's never too late right, to start nourishing yourself properly when it comes to that. 
yes? And see if your dreams change. If they need change, you might already have just the most absolute beautiful dreams where you're shown parts of spirit world, beauty of spirit world, then obviously you're in an amazing place. You're also in an amazing place to teach. Yes? Okay. Others. And if not, then, well, start the journey. Start the journey from nightmares and fear and what's it called? Fear. Uh, not being confident. This that. Eh? Start your journey to become more so. How do you do that? I'd have to say. The best guide in that for you, to begin with, would be Jesus. To read the words of Jesus in the New Testament. You start with that. Connect to the heart of our brother. Yes? Okay. That's the last I have to say. Of course, then there's true parents. Yes? Yes, and then there's the divine principle. Huh? Woo! There's the blessing, the change of lineage to God's again. Right? Yes? Okay. But. But. There's no but, really. Yet. Huh? Who are we most familiar with? If you're a Christian, even if you're not. Who are we most familiar with? It is Jesus. And it's a good start to have. Jesus was our teacher and our guide. Yes? Yeah. Then uh, you automatically will find to true parents. True parents' heart. God's heart. Yes? Mm. I could say more, but... Uh, I also found, you know, that... Sometimes one has to wait. I've said this before. There's a reason why Jesus only told his disciples certain things. And even the disciples didn't understand it. And easily something that was meant in a, what is God's ideal? Already part of God's ideal. And you try to teach that. And if the people aren't there with their heart to mind, with their conscience, with their subconscience as well. <coughs> <coughs> then it can be used in a negative. So if teachings of people like Jesus, like true parents, are being used in a negative, then it will be misunderstood. And it, then we start to use it against each other. And that's not, that is not the purpose of, of all that, of, of, of all these teachings. N never. And I think that's why some things just weren't said. We, we're given, we're given as little as we are, though that it looks like a lot, but we're given as little as we are to see what are we going to do with that? Are we going to grow towards God's heart? Or are we going to use it to tear each other apart? Divide. Divide and conquer. Right? All grow together. Anyway. <sighs> interesting days, right? I definitely had an interesting day yesterday. Yes. <laughs> never ending. It's never ending. It's like, I'm thinking, I think I... I think I got it now. <laughs> Don't need to think another thing <laughs> for the rest of my life. And then something like this, I'm going, oh man, there's way more. <laughs> of course there's way more. 
What a small place do we live at on earth? And how big, infinite is spirit world. Even the universe doesn't compare to it. Ah. Well, anyway, I'm going to be living there once, not someday, for eternity. Lots to do there, too. Lots to explore there, too. Yes, never ending. All right, that's all I have to share this morning. <laughs> Who knows where I'm going to go with all this, right? Yes? Okay. God's love and blessings always. May he protect you, and I will talk to you all another time.